Here's a famous problem that I would say every Algebra 2, at least Algebra 2 student, needs to know how to do. It's a fairly basic problem, and but it just gives you this understanding of the relationship of how to be able to solve rational equations when you're dealing with denominators. So let's get out of the way why this is such a famous or common problem that you are going to see. So when we're first learning about solving rational equations, usually we start with a proportion or something with some very basic fractions, and then we get into the binomials. And that's where a lot of students just kind of tense up and they're like, ah, I don't wanna be dealing with factoring or binomials and multiplying. It just seems confusing. But here is the thing, ladies and gentlemen. When you see that you have two binomials, all right, now these are linear binomials and you can see this is a quadratic, but a lot of times you'll also see one where it's a quadratic trinomial over here. More often than not, the product of your two linear binomials is going to multiply to give you your third denominator. That is just kind of the more typical thing that you're gonna see in majority of textbooks. Is that always the case? Absolutely not. But if it is not the case, the more advanced or complicated the problem is going to be. Just a kind of rule of thumb, when you see two different denominators, always look to see if their product is gonna multiply to give you the third one. Because in the end, what we are looking for, ladies and gentlemen, is we're trying to be able to identify the least common denominator. And let me just kind of give you a quick little review of what I'm talking about. What if I had like a one half plus a, or let's do one half x, plus a one over three x is equal to a one over six. Now, if we want to get rid of the denominators, what I'm simply going to do is notice two times three equals six, right? So all I simply need to do is multiply everything by six, because six divides on six, that gets rid of that denominator. Three divides on the six, that gets rid of that denominator, and two divides on six, right? You don't need to multiply by two times three times six, which would give you a 36. You don't need to multiply everything by 36. You just need to multiply by what we call the least common denominator. So notice, x minus three times x plus three is a difference of two squares, which is x squared minus nine. So therefore, when I'm multiplying by the least common denominator with binomials or you know with expressions, it makes sense when you're dealing with numbers, right, and integers. But when you're dealing with expressions, sometimes it gets a little murky. It's not as like straightforward. So always look to see if those two multiply to give you a third, and then you recognize here, yeah, I just need to multiply by x squared minus nine. Now you could write it like that, or you might actually prefer to write it out in the factored form: x minus three times an x plus three but hopefully you know the difference of two squares, that's x squared minus nine, right? So I'm gonna multiply this times every single term. And here's the thing, now we recognize that's gonna get rid of my denominators and it's gonna give me an equation that I can quickly go ahead and solve. X minus three divides into this x minus three times, so I'm gonna be left with a x plus three. So I can write it as a two times x plus three. Over here, x plus three divides out with the x plus three, leaving me just with an x minus three, so therefore it's gonna be a negative four times x minus three. And then over here, obviously this is x squared minus nine, so therefore those are gonna divide out, and that's gonna leave me with an eight. Now, hopefully you recognize this is just a multi-step equation with some parentheses, so I'm going to apply distributive property, and then I can just use my inverse operations to go ahead and solve. So it's a fairly basic problem. It gives you a good foundation of solving rational expressions that you can now go ahead and use for more complicated problems, because there are a lot of more complicated problems in solving rational equations. Now we just have a two-step equation. You can see that this problem is really not that bad, but you have to understand the foundation of solving rational expression or rational equations and what you're looking for. And once you go ahead and get that, then you're gonna have a much easier time learning further topics in, oh, this problem, yeah, learning further topics in Algebra 2. Hope you enjoy.